Have you ever wondered how you can bring your team into your client flow seamlessly? Well, the HoneyBook Teams features helps you do just that. Hey there, my name is Christy. I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life. We are a systems consulting agency where we help you set up your business systems for success. I'm also a HoneyBook pro, so I love to chat all things HoneyBook features, updates, use cases, you name it. So if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel if you want all of the HoneyBook and other system tips coming your way. Whether you already have a team or you're a solopreneur and plan to bring on a team in the future, utilizing HoneyBook's team features and setting up your client flow platform to be able to collaborate with your team, whether now or in the future, is going to make your life so much easier. There are so many incredible things you could do with the HoneyBook Teams features, just to name a few. You can add team members to client project portals so they're in the loop about every single thing going on in the project. You can actually give them ownership of that project so all of the emails are coming from them as well. It's a really great way to seamlessly hand off that transition from sales to onboarding and get your team involved from the bat. Your team can also have their own schedulers and integrate their calendars so your clients can actually schedule sessions with your team member directly and so many more amazing things that you can do with HoneyBook Teams. So with that, let's go ahead and dive in. So let's chat HoneyBook Teams. So before we dive into the different features, let's first address where you can find the team function, and how to add your team members. So when you come into your HoneyBook in the top right corner, you're going to see your photo, and you can see my account and then the company settings. When you click on company settings, then you're gonna wanna go to the sidebar and click on team. And here is where you'll be able to invite team members. So you'll be able to put their work email, full name. You don't have to put phone and mailing address, but you can if you want to. And then you're gonna choose their role. So when you click on basic, moderator, admin, super admin, you can see what they can and cannot do. So I urge you to go through and decide what level of permissions. Um, basically, basic can create and send files, create and edit templates, create and edit automations, edit library files and images. They can't see other team members' projects, add or change permissions, edit pipeline stages, access bookkeeping, access bank details and view contacts. Moderator can do a couple other things, but they cannot change permissions, create emails or files in other users' projects, edit pipeline stages, bookkeeping and bank. Admin cannot create new files or edit pipeline stages, access bookkeeping or the bank information. But you can see they have a little bit more permissions and then super admin can do basically everything. Um, so you can decide what level that you want your team members depending on their role and what they need to do inside your account. And then one other thing is you can actually also add bookkeeper access. So you can give bookkeepers, your bookkeeper, a link for restricted access just to your financial data and reports. So they don't have to have access to your entire HoneyBook account, um, especially with, this is important to note, when you go into your projects, which I'll show you in a second, how each team member has a different pipeline, basically the team members that are added to projects will only see the financials of the projects they're added to. So having the bookkeeper access, they won't have to be on the project portals to see the finances or log into your account, but they'll be able to see all the financial data that they need. Okay, so then you could see emails, um, send me an email whenever a client makes a payment to a team member or signs a team member's contracts. And then do you want to allow all team members' calendars to be visible to everyone? So this is where you are going to be able to invite team members, set their permissions. As you can see, this is only editable by the company owner. So I'm the owner of this HoneyBook account, so nobody else on the team will be able to edit this team member section. Okay, so that's where you find teams. Now let's dive into some specific team features. 
So now when we navigate over to the projects pipeline, you can see that different team members can have different project pipelines. So you can see, okay, I'm added to 81 projects. Andrea's added to 19. Jeff is added to 84. So what does that mean? That each team member may be added to specific projects that they have insight into, and you can click on their pipeline to see what theirs looks like. So if I click into Smith Roofing, John Smith's project, you can see that Jeff and I are both added to this project. If I wanna add any other team members, I can just go over here and click additional team members and add them to that portal. Now they are going to be getting every single correspondence from this project. So anytime we send an email or the client emails back in the portal, um, each team member that's added will always be CC'd on that. So this is really great in terms of team communication, keeping everyone in the loop, but also this is where it might get tricky because you're like, okay, I want Andrea, our project manager, on the project, but not until the client signs, because she doesn't need to be inundated with the lead and sales process. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove Andrea from this project, and let's talk about the piece where, for example, every single lead that comes in, Jeff and I both wanna be added to that project. We want to be involved in the sales process. We don't want other team members inundated with that just yet. So you can actually make sure that whatever team members you want involved, whether it's yourself and someone else or just someone else, let me show you how you could do that. So if you navigate into tools, my templates, and then you go into contact forms, then you'll see in the default contact form here in the settings, this is where you can change who is this incoming leads recipient. So if you click on invite team members, you could see that I've also added Jeff. I'm gonna be the project owner, so you can only have one project owner. So if I switch Jeff to project owner, then I would just be workspace participant. You can also just have them as a leads recipient. So they only receive an email notification when the lead comes in. Um, so you can choose who you want. You can add multiple people, say, okay, maybe we want the three of us always on the leads recipient. And that way, when that lead comes in, Jeff and I are both in the loop. I never have to manually add him to the project. So now let's circle back, right? We have the lead that came in. Jeff and I are the recipients and participating in that workspace. Now, once that client actually goes through and books and becomes a client, I now wanna transfer ownership of this project to my project manager, Andrea. So if I come back to Smith Roofing and I click into the project, once this client goes through the process and signs, I'm now going to click on the three dots here and assign this to the team member, Andrea. So I'm gonna click done and now it's going to assign her. So now I wanna go through a couple little discrepancies that happen here and why I assigned the project to her. So first of all, I assigned the project to her because it's now her project, right? She's the owner of this project, she's communicating with the client. But what happened is now this actually kicked me off of the project, but I still wanna be a participant. So I'm gonna go ahead and add myself back. So I'll add the team member. And then another thing about this is uh, currently, when you have an automation applied, in order for those emails to send from a specific person, they have to be the project owner. So if I go into my automation and show you um, the booking automation for HoneyBook, once this is all the proposal follow up, right? So this is me doing the sales process. Then the welcome email comes from me. And then we have Tass in here saying, hey, we have a new client, reassign the project to Andrea and then add yourself back. That's a note for me. And now it will have all these tasks assigned to Andrea. They also have a new feature in automations um, where you can actually assign these to specific people as well, which is awesome. So then the onboarding email that Andrea will send, now this will come from her since she's the workspace owner. 
So I wanted to go through that little discrepancy there so you know I have gone through the trial and error of figuring this out so I want to make your life as easy as possible. So just note that um, when you have the project owner then the automations and emails will come from that person currently. Okay, two more points I wanna share with you. Just like I mentioned about the contact form, how you can actually assign specific projects to team members when a contact form comes in, you can do the same thing with lead forms as well. So if you come into a lead form and you go into settings, you can then see incoming leads recipient and then you can add and edit team members there. So same thing as contact forms, now that's available for lead forms, which is super exciting. And the last thing I wanna go through is schedulers. So a couple different things here. Number one, all your team members that are added to HoneyBook can have their own schedulers, which is amazing. So they can set up their specific times and days they're available. They can link their Google Calendar. So HoneyBook is reading their schedule. Um, and then each person has control over their schedulers. So that is one feature of scheduling. And then the other team function of scheduling is that you can actually set round robin to include team members on that specific session. So let me explain this a little bit because it's a little bit tricky. So say, for example, in the Zoom consultation call, I want to cycle these between Jeff and I. So I can turn this on and add me and Jeff. And basically what it's going to do is it makes sure that capacity and workload is even. So first, it's going to look at my scheduler and client A will schedule with me. Then client B comes in and now it's going to reference Jeff scheduler and schedule with Jeff. So it basically keeps going back and forth between who it's scheduling with. So I would be very particular about this, especially if a different team members have different capacity that you wanna make sure that you're using this properly. So that's what the round robin team function means. I am hoping in the future they will have where you can add team members to calls and instead of round robin, it's just reading both of your schedulers. Like for example, our HoneyBook kickoff call, uh, my team member and I, Andrea, are always on those, so I would love if we could sync that up together. But hopefully in the future, the round robin is still cool for when it is useful. So that is it when it comes to HoneyBook team features. HoneyBook really has changed the game by allowing you to collaborate with your team in your account with your clients, keeping everyone in the loop. So I hope this was helpful for you, whether you have a team or you are looking to grow your team in the future. So I hope that tutorial was helpful for you in learning the power of HoneyBook Teams, how you can set it up for your business, what the functionalities even are, and some tips and tricks on how to really maximize this feature for your business. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And this is just one feature and use case of HoneyBook, but there are so many other amazing things that you can do with it. So if you want more tangible examples or a deep dive a bit further, go ahead and check out our on-demand webinar called Unlock the Potential of HoneyBook. In this webinar, I go through multiple different use cases, industries, and a bunch of different tips to really get you kickstarted with HoneyBook. I'll make sure to link that in the description below so you can sign up and watch it today. With that, thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.